Hi, I'm David Ireland, the Wildlife Man. Welcome to another Wildlife Man podcast. Now, this is episode number 10. Now, today's story is sponsored by Kess Gallery. They have the most amazing aerial photography of the Sydney region. And the story is titled, Sky Pirates. But before I get to the story about the Sky Pirates, I need to explain where I was. What part of this beautiful earth was I? And where did this all happen? Well, it happened at Christmas Island in the Indian Ocean. Now, 60 million years ago, a volcanic peak rose some five thousand meters to the surface from the sea floor. It was topped by coral reefs and soon it was capped by limestone. Now over the years with water erosion significant underground cave systems developed and we wanted to actually explore some of those caves. Some of the caves that had never been filmed before. And what happened was strange beyond belief. We crawled through stalactites and stalagmites and careful not to damage anything. We had powerful lights and we finally came into this huge cave. And the smell in there was horrific because from the floor of the cave, rising some 20 metres up towards the ceiling, was this huge mound which can only be described as poo. And it was crawling with countless insects like very, very small cockroaches and God knows what. A mountain of poo inside an underground cave system. Now the only way we could find out what creatures or creature had created this huge mountain of poo was to climb it, and that was me being the presenter. So the crew got their lights and cameras ready on tripods, and I've got wetsuit boots on, and I did not want to climb this thing. It was soft and soggy and smelly, and and I had to put my hands in it to get up. It was quite steep, and I kept climbing up it and climbing till I got right on top. And there I am standing on a mountain of poo, something I didn't want to do ever in my life. And I shone my spotlights up to the roof of the cave. And there was a crack running through the ceiling. And it was filled with little tiny swiftlets, little tiny birds. And over countless, God knows how many years, their waste and formed a mountain of poo. This is not very pleasant, I promise you. Not only am I standing on this huge mound of poo, but also they are continually dropping on my head and on my shoulders. And it stinks and it's very hot. So I'm getting out of here. Yuck! So there's my mountain of poo story. Now for my story about sky pirates. Now, as I mentioned, Christmas Island has this amazing, true rainforest habitat. And it supports many different endemic creatures, especially birds like the booby and the frigate bird. The frigate birds are the sky pirates. And I'll explain the reason they get that name in a minute. Now, it is so important that the rainforest trees on Christmas Island, that whole forest, is protected because the frigate birds only nest there, nowhere else on the planet. So it is paramount that the Rainforest National Park on Christmas Island is protected. Now let's talk about these amazing birds, the frigate birds. First, they are huge. They have a wingspan of over 2.5 meters. They are amazing. They can soar above the ocean and above the island 
without hardly ever flapping a wing. And their long tails allow them to steer. They can travel with tremendous speed and they can glide for day after day and even sleep on the wing. And what they do with these long beaks with a very, very sharp hook, they can skim the surface of the ocean and they can hunt for flying fish and squid, even sometimes jellyfish. But they also harass other seabirds. And they'll harass them with their tremendous flight ability. They're so acrobatic. They can come in so fast and they'll harass the other birds, these seabirds. And eventually they will regurgitate their, their, their last catch. And the frigates will catch that in the air and take it back to their chicks. What I wanted to do was to really showcase how important the Christmas Island rainforest is and why birds like the frigate birds must be protected. So I wanted to do something that was very special and yes, somewhat dangerous. But what people have to understand is Organisations like Discovery Channel or even Channel 9 or whatever, you can't just point a camera at a bird and film it and expect them to buy the program. They won't buy it. So sometimes hands-on is a lot more spectacular and it gives people like me the chance to showcase the problems that native animals face trying to survive in a modern world. So sometimes we do something that might seem a bit dangerous, but the action gets the message across. And that's why I do it. I wanted to hand feed the frigate birds. So we had a bucket of bait fish. They look like yellowtail, about this long. And first we're just throwing them up in the air. And the frigates are just soaring above us. A little bit intimidating, a little bit like, like vultures. There they are, these huge birds, these big, long, sharp beaks. And they come up and they come down so fast and take the fish, boom, boom, right above my head, again and again. You hear the beak snap, snap around my face. I thought, it's not good enough, we can do better. I've got to hold that fish. So I held it like that. I didn't want a finger up, they might take a finger off. So I held the bait fish in my hand like that, and bait fish is hanging out. I'm like this, scared of my eyes too, with these birds with their sharp beak. And down they would come, and the big males especially, they would come in so fast, and they're rather dominant in the sky, tending to overtake the, the area around me somewhat. They have a funny red pouch that they blow up in their neck to attract females. So it's easy to know or recognise the big males. And their flying ability, they're like fighter bombers. So cool to watch. And they'd come down and boom, snap the fish in half out of my hand again and again and again. The action was insane. But after 10 minutes, my hands were bloodied big time. But boy, did we get that message home that we wanted to save these magnificent birds, the frigate birds. Frigate birds are called the pirates of the air. This, this is a greater frigate, which, which was actually reared here at the, the national parks because as a chick it had fallen out of the nest or lost its parents or whatever. You can see by that beak that is very much a, a fish-eating beak so they can skim the water and catch squid and fish without any trouble. But the most amazing thing about frigates is their ability to fly. They rival, they rival eagles and hawks the way they soar and dive and twist and turn. And of course, these are the pirates. They, they often harass other seabirds to get their catch. And they do it very successfully with sharp talons and an awesome beak. Now I'm gonna do a little experiment here where we're gonna try and hand feed a whole lot of frigate birds and they're going to come from everywhere. Now I know I'm going to get smashed, especially with that terrible beak. Now I can see a sky full of frigate birds. 
They look a bit like vultures to me. <laughs> and I've got a bucket of pilchards. So now we're going to demonstrate just the amazing flying ability of these creatures. And I know I'm going to get smashed. Here we go. Oh, they're not frozen, damn it. Ow! Here we go. Come on, come on, come on. Ow! Got this big time. And here's a big old time. Yes! Look at these guys. Good God. Come on. Yeah! Amazing way up. So turn up. Here we go. One. Yes. Beautiful. Don't take my fingers. Come on, come on, come on. Oh, gee, that was sloppy. Those beaks are so sharp. Just, just the fish. Oh. Funny we have bigger fish. Okay, here we go again. Ah. Oh, no, come on, up this side. Someone take it. Be gentle, right? Be gentle. Not my fingers. Be gentle. Oh, did you see that? Not down here. Gosh, the young ones are not very clever and they're biting my hand. I like the more experienced ones, like that. <laughs> There's greater frigates here and also Christmas Island frigates, which are only found on this island. Here's one. Someone said that. Not my hand. Yeah. Oh, this is painful stuff. I hope you enjoy this. Not, don't take my eyes out. Oh, how was that? That was a male with a neck all blown up. The big red pouch. Woo! He's more experienced than the other guys. Okay, we need, we need it. Here's a nice one for an adult. I need an adult. Come on, someone is clever. Wait a minute, here. Yes, I like you, you're good. Couldn't you get bigger fish? Okay, here we go again. Not yet, I'm not ready. Here we go. Come on. You didn't get it. Ow! I don't like these young ones. You've got to learn to fly, mate. Watch your old man. That's what I want to see. See the way they use those wings. They're just so clever. If you're a booby and these guys were chasing you and you had, you had food, they would intimidate you so much. Eventually you'd have to drop it because they would frighten the hell out of me if I was another bird. It's funny they have different personalities. Some of them are a little bit more aggressive than others. Okay. No, not you again. That one bit me last time. Just, it's just so much fun to interact with creatures like this. I just love it. Here he comes. Yes. Was that good or what? Ow. The thick rainforest is paramount to the survival of the endemic animals and birds of Christmas Island. Christmas Island has been mined for phosphates for over 100 years. And that has caused problems. Not long ago, when I turned up, the mining company wanted to increase the area that they were mining and take out another large section of rainforest so they can mine for phosphates. There's been scientists that have gone there and studied the coral reefs that are close to the island and some of them have been damaged by the pollution from the dust. Although there's many reefs there that are pristine. Also, of course, you're chopping down rainforest trees that are the habitats to these Christmas Island crabs that are just insane, that gather in masses when they migrate to endemic birds that are not found anywhere else on the planet. 
and we mine this amazing place, Christmas Island, for phosphate. I don't like that. I don't like it one bit. And I didn't like it when I was there. And I, I did raise that in my film, Giant Moray Eel. It was shot at Christmas Island. And when it was about to go to air on Channel 9, the mining company were applying for a licence to knock down more rainforest trees, to expand their mining. And they didn't like what I was going to say. And they tried to put a caveat on me and also Channel 9 and wanted to sue me for defamation if I raised anything about the mining company. Anyway, we ignored it and the film went to air. I don't know how much influence my film had, but the government wouldn't allow them to increase the area that they were going to mine. And I'm glad about that. I can understand why the local shire would want to keep the mining because it employs people and, of course, there's ramifications for local shops and businesses and accommodation, whatever. What I see, the most wonderful opportunity for Christmas Island is tourism because it is an absolute paradise. It is one of the most pristine, amazing islands I have ever been to in my life. The rainforest is filled with such incredible creatures. These big coconut crabs and the red crabs and these endemic birds and just insane. And marine life that is absolutely superb. Whale sharks and all sorts of species of sharks. Fantastic coral reefs. And ultimately for me a giant spotted moray eel, an incredibly rare animal that we did film at Christmas Island. Now, every week we will publish a new Wildlife Man podcast. I've spent most of my life working with a huge diversity of animals from the animal kingdom. So if you enjoy, please subscribe. Please share, like, and ring that notification button so you never miss a new story being published. And remember, all my films are available streaming on demand from Vimeo. So that's it from me till next week. I am your wildlife man.